Hi everyone, welcome back. All set here. I know I have been gone for quite some time, but you know, life. Anyway, this is just a quick catch up. I am jumping on the bandwagon by a hashtag that Rochelle of uh, Rochelle Handmade Designs started, which is what are we working on Wednesdays? And I know it's late by the time you see this, but it's still Wednesday where I am. So first of all, I want to say thank you to my subscribers. Um, I've got a few subscribers on this channel, a few people who are interested in what I'm doing. Secondly, I also want to thank Shona of Black Irish Label. She had a giveaway and I won. And I won a book that has been on my wish list, lust list, for quite some time. So let me show you what I got. She sent me a pressing cloth. Now, on top of the book, she sent me a pressing cloth and a beautiful card. But this is a pressing cloth that um, I'm going to give a shot. Because I usually use a white handkerchief, you know, something like that, or a piece of muslin. This is going to be interesting for me to work with. It's kind of a netting sort of fiber. So I'm going to give that a try. She sent me this beautiful card. Shona, how did you know? And it's a card that I need to pull out my coloring pencils for. And she puts a note in here that says, I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. Thank you for entering my giveaway um, for the mood guide to fabric and fashion. This card can be a way to slow down and do what we love, create. So how does she know that I needed to pull out my coloring pencils? Because I just got a coloring book that I'm going to be working with. So put that aside. Excuse me a moment. Sorry about that. That was my cat. Actually, not my cat, but the cat that's currently in my house. It's dinner time. Anyway, the book. Now, just like last time, I am blind as a bat. So, let's put on some glasses. Oh, there you are. Gorgeous people. Anyway, here's the book. The Mood Guide to Fabric and Fashion. It's just filled with so much goodness. I don't know if you can see. Let's see what I can get in here. Oh, look. Lots of inspiration. Different types of fibers. Let's see what else we have in here. Designers. So I think this would be good to help with uh, color coordination, you know, um, pulling all your colors together perhaps to create a wardrobe. And I'm going to be talking about that maybe next week. Okay, so, whew, I have a lot. Anyway, I had a birthday last month, end of July, and it was a big birthday. It is a big birthday. Nowadays, any birthday that you celebrate is a big, big birthday. It should be a big deal. Anyway, I always make a big deal of my birthday. Um, and this year, some friends got together and took me out and, and all of that. Anyway, um, one of the things I like to do on my birthday is treat myself to what I call a coffee table book. So this year, I bought a few coffee table books because, you know, last year, <sighs> we didn't do too much on my birthday. So one of the books I had gotten was, oh, this big one, Adrian. I love anything old Hollywood, and Adrian was a very influential costume designer. He created clothing for, let me see if I can find anything in here. Oh my gosh. Ooh, he's big. He's big. Um, oh, look. Look at that. You see that? 
I want to show you guys something. I did not pay mark the page. So let me see if I can find what I have. No, that's not one of them. But, oh. go that one I think I'm getting close oh <laughs> he created that we all know what that's from what about this and Take a look at those sleeves. Remind you of anything? Everything old is new again. There's nothing new under the sun, I always say. And my other big book is by Edith Head. And she was another prolific designer. And I just, oh, I love what she did. Her clothing became the characters in the movies. Her clothing brought out the best of the actors and the actresses. And I think that's what our clothing should do nowadays. There's a photo of Miss Head herself. And uh, this was a, a woman who you know, there's a Betty Davis, when she died, Betty Davis spoke and said that, um, you know, Betty Davis understood Edith's struggle to actually become acknowledged in the field of costume design. And Betty Davis says that across town, Edith, Another woman, full of potential, was struggling to make an impression on her employers in the costume department. Both Edith and Betty struggled nearly daily to stay on top of their professions and both show the world what dogged determination can produce, a career spanning decades of quality work that will still awe and inspire many for generations to come. So, yeah. Whether we realize it or not, fabric, cloth, clothing also plays a big role in the world. Um, it influences everything. Um, so, you know, last month, July? Yeah, last month, it was Ankara Appreciation Week. And, you know, this is probably one of the most appropriated fabrics out there. Anyway, I wanted to learn much more about it than I already know. And I've been working with Ankara for many years, but there's still so much to learn. So I went on a journey and I purchased a few more books. And this one, as small as it is, it goes into, you know, the history and the beginnings of it and who, how, why it came into being. So I got that one. And then I got this one as well. Because many of the motifs that we have seen on our cloth, on this beautiful fabric, actually mean something. Um, I am mindful, I try to be mindful, believe it or not, of the designs that I choose to wear. Um, I know that commercially this has made, of course you're familiar with this design, many of you should be. So it's good to have an idea of what you're saying. 
without even uttering a word. And so that leads me to my project that I'm going to be wrapping up the month of August with. So I just have about a week. Actually, I don't even have that much time. Um, I have to get this completed. I haven't even cut it yet. But I've been inspired by, I guess you could say, in reading books like this, uh, Fashion Tribes, learning more about this world that I live in. One of the things I learned reading this, who knew, let me see if I can get this put out the glare, who knew that heavy metal was the thing in Botswana, Africa. I didn't know that. Heavy metal. Um, it's amazing that we can think that where we are, how we live, it's, it's just happening here. But so many things happen, um, I guess you could say, around the world that affects everything else. Let me see if I can find something. Um, look at the shoes. You know, the colors. So it's not just that that I'm influenced by. That. You know, um, men's fashion. I have no interest in creating men's fashion. What I'm interested in is the dynamic of the exploration of color when they finally feel uh, untethered by these, untethered by what uh, society says they should be in. Yes? Uh, let's see. Here we have Oswald the Dane, right? I think Oswald and there's another one, Diallo, would make um, traditional men's suits and the linings would be vibrant and bold, you know, just to push against the status quo. Still conservative? That pop of color that we're always talking about, I just find it fascinating, you know? Look at that. And so, it's another book I added to my collection. And I am just loving that look, right? What we know as the zoot suit. So I'm just finding myself, I don't know, wanting to explore more of the world around me and also express my appreciation for the world around me in my and through my clothing. This is not about... <laughs> This is not about uh, going against the status quo. I think it's just me wanting to open up and explore like Iris. So, to end this video, I'm going to give you a preview of the fabric I'm going to use to wrap up the month of August. And it is Oh no, I've got something else to show you before I do that. Okay, so I did some sewing, actually. If you've been following me on Instagram and pattern review and all of that. So I did some sewing, actually, on the last day of July. I had planned a dress and um, 
made a rookie mistake and did not do a full bust adjustment. I was working on this dress. So I had made some alterations to it. You know, I cut the ruffle a little bit. I took four inches off the ruffle, but I did not do a full bust adjustment. So when I put it on, you know, right here, that stood away from the body. I was at the 11th hour. I wanted to wear the dress to my birthday lunch, which was going to be the next day, July 31st. <sighs> Late at night, I put it aside and I'm thinking, oh, you know, I go to bed, like, okay, I've got something else. I got something I could put on. It's not me made, but you know, it still looked just as good. And I'm like, no, I woke up early that morning. I'm like, no, I want something new to wear, something to celebrate my re-entry back into my sewing journey. So I pulled out, well, this is one of three patterns. I wanted something similar to this. Hold on, I'll be right back. I'll get the other two patterns. Okay, so usually when I get a piece of fabric or I have a piece of fabric, I I have an idea in mind of what I'm going to use that fabric for. And I can almost envision what it's going to look like when it's finished, when it's completed. So I knew that with this particular fabric that I wanted something off the shoulder. So I pulled out that pattern. And I really, I wanted something with a little more flair, a little more zhuzh, you know? This just seemed very casual. And then I pulled out this one. And I don't know, I still got the same casual vibe. I just wanted something a little bit more a little, with a little bit more sophistication, I guess you could say. So it's kind of bizarre that this is what happens when you have a million patterns in your stash. This is just one drop in the bucket. But I selected this one. And it was something about it that I felt um, won over. It could be the styling through the body, which was a little bit more fitted than these, you know. Um, these fall straight down, not even skimming over the body. You can see the width straight from under the arm all the way down. You know, this seemed to have a bit more body shaping in there. And it was perfect. So, I did do a modification on that. You know, here, this is supposed to be just a straight band across and I'll show you what I did with that. I altered it. So the fabric that I had used for this dress, was this. See, I've got scraps of it left. And let me see, I can show you the dress because why not? This is the dress. Um, I am very proud of this. So instead of it just being a flat band, um, I had read somewhere that if you didn't put any elastic in here, if you just left a flat band, one of the complaints was that when you bent forward or you moved around, moved your shoulders around, that you had this gaping. So I put elastic in there. But before I did that, um, you have a separate piece for the bands up here front and the back, I attach those. If you look closely, you can see where I stitched them on, right there, I attach them. And then after I attach them, I laid out and positioned the sleeves so that everything would match across the top for the sleeves. So the sleeves I actually cut out last. I am a stickler for some semblance of pattern matching. I, I just like the appeal of the eye. I mean, even right here to the sleeves. I can 
show you this on the sleeve. That was so important to me. Um, the hem. I needed it to, see, be semi-continuous all the way around. So, that was my birthday dress. Coming home, feeling pretty good. Um, later on that week, I think it was, yes, I created, I sewed another dress. Okay. Something simple. It was in the week. I was still in that place. Now we're in the month of August. And so I pulled out this dress. I pulled out this pattern, rather. And it's a simple to sew. And again, after I made it up, I'm still not sure if I should not have done a full bust adjustment. It fits. I cut out a size medium and it fits. But the armhole was low, like seriously low. So I had to take it up, bring it up a little bit. Um, I don't know. I cut it to the length, but on me, and I'm not super tall. I mean, I'm only 5'5". Five five. It came up to like right here, which means it was longer than a midi and shorter than a maxi, which means it had what I call a high water look. So I'm still going to put a long ruffle because I want my maxis to be maxi. I don't want it to be a midi, but I'm going to try to this pattern again, but this time I'm going to do it in a knit. I'm going to do my last gasp of summer sewing. I've got a hot pink knit and an orange knit. I'm going to choose one of those and make it up in that. And I'll show you the fabric that I did that in. Let's see. Here we are. This one. Turquoise and purple Ankara. Okay, and I'll show you the dress. Let me put that up here. Okay. So this one I installed the elastic in. When I do the knit, I think I'm going to leave it without the elastic. Um, but you can see it's a simple, almost what we would call a pillowcase type dress, but it's not. Okay, um, two pieces, three pieces. <clears throat> Ties with a, a bow in the back. You run the drawstring through, pull it up. But I did have to make an adjustment. You see just a little bit here and take up the underarm just a little bit it was just sitting too low for my comfort and yes i will add a ruffle to this i have enough i think it would just be better looking for me um it does require that you install a piece of bias binding and i have a ton of bias binding from mask making so double bias binding oh. there's my elastic I didn't even sew it the elastic is thin I just put a knot in it I didn't close it up I wanted to finish this dress and I finished it that morning and wore it to work that day yes that's what I used to do back in the good old days. Get up early in the morning and make a dress. And I just felt so good about wearing my dress. So, the final dress, the dress that started everything off, which was this one. I was looking at it and, you know, I already have enough projects up here for alterations and all that. And I didn't want any UFOs. Do I have any UFOs? Hmm, I might. Maybe a couple pounds ago, I might have UFOs from that. But I wanted to finish this dress. I wanted to. Now, you look at the line drawing, you know, oh God, 
match this flare. Let me see what I can do about that. There we go. That's a little bit better. Not the best, but, you know. It's just a, seems like a simple pullover sack dress. And I'm going to put a link to Maddie's of my show. She made this dress. She wore that dress to my birthday lunch. So, you know, this is how the universe works. I guess maybe that's why mine didn't work out. But she made the short version, and it was so cute. There's a photo of us. Listen, one of these days, I'm going to learn how to insert photos and all of that. But in the meantime, when I come back next week, I'll have a photo. Um, she made the short version. So, um, and it was just so cute. And you know what? It is short. It was above her knee. But I think she probably lengthened it. And she did an FBA. But, and she talks about this when she did her review, that armhole is low. So if you're wearing a bra that's, you know, has a band that wide, that, that band will show. So, later on in the week, I finished mine. So mine was made from this raindrop. Marty calls it peacock feathers because I think she, no, she actually did hers like this too. But I call mine raindrop. Purple rain. Uh, here is my dress. So what I'm going to do my son was the one. There are photos of me in it on social media. He had tied a very large bow in the back. But this is the dress. So if you look really closely, you can see these gathers. They're not puckers. They are gathers that I hand stitched. Baby, baby hand stitched. If someone was to pull apart this dress, I hand stitch the gathers with yellow thread so that I can see the placement of where I wanted that fullness to, to fall. Okay? Um, and you can see it. It's inconspicuous when I put on the dress. You know, that fills out. Now, it does have you use bias binding, put bias binding. You're supposed to put the bias binding on and put it to the inside but I didn't I didn't want that um, I doubled the width of the bias binding and put it in I wanted that feature on the outside like that you do need bias binding for the back of the neck as well and a hook and eye and then it's got this long scarf bow thing and I laid it out so that um, if I wore a big bow, then you saw the raindrop on the outside. If I wanted to have it just hanging down, I could have it like that on one side or hanging. Let's see if I could do this <clears throat> like that, hanging down. The ruffle. See, I shortened it. That's a deep ruffle. And it's what I call mid axi length, meaning it's a little, it's a bit longer than a, a midi, but not quite to the floor. And it's just high enough to show the shoes. So models on the average of 5'10". Mine is a little shorter on me. You can see her shoes, but if I made this the full length and I'm 5'5", five five, I would have had a floor length maxi. So that's something to consider. I would say that she's about 5'10", 5'8", 5'10". So of course, you would see that. But mine is a little shorter than that. And you just may want to cut that off simply because, I don't know, I still think that that ruffle is too deep. It's too big. I'm thinking, every time I look at that dust ruffle, I think, see, dust ruffle. You see, I said that. That was not a faux pas. That was not a Freudian slip. 
I said dust ruffle. Because that's what I think of. I think of a dust ruffle. It's just so deep. I just think that it should be. I cut I cut about that much off. I cut that off. So and the bias binding I put on took lifted that up a little bit. So you just might want to be aware of that when you do that. Okay. That neck, that is wide. That collar is super wide. So if you have a short neck, and I have a short neck, you will fold it down. I mean, this is how high it is. But you can fold it down like that. So just something to think about. Okay, so I think that wraps up my makes so far for the month of August. And as I said, because I'm a half hour in, I've kept you long enough. This is just supposed to be a quick catch up. My, one of my final projects, I'm thinking I might get one more project and then this one as well to wrap up the month of August is this Ankara print. Oh, you can actually see that is blue. That is navy blue, golden yellow, and pink. So, thank you so much for joining me. Again, thank you so much to my subscribers. Thank you so much for supporting me. Shona, thank you so much for my book, my gift. Thank you for, you know, keeping me inspired. I love you guys. Yeah, I'll say that. As Mari says, I hope you find joy in every day. Well, that's paraphrasing her. But anyway, talk to you later. Bye-bye.